Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Bridget Young from babyformulaexpert.com. I'm a doctor of perinatal nutrition and a certified lactation counselor, a mom of two toddlers who you will hear and probably see. I'm also on shower today, thus the hat. <laughs> um, and today is going to be pretty quick because it's okay, PD. Um, because as usual, I'm watching my kids and I have probably five minutes. Um, so today I wanted to make a video and talk about a very overarching topic very briefly. And this is the point that all baby formulas are not the same. So I'm making this video as kind of an archive or something that you can refer your girlfriend, your pediatrician, anybody to. I hear that a lot. Well, my so-and-so told me that all formulas are the same, so it doesn't matter which one I choose. Um, and I have an entire website dedicated to educating parents and healthcare providers about the nutritional differences between different formulas to how parents pick and find the perfect formula that meets their individual baby's biology. So, Here's the breakdown. The basis of formula, like all food, is the three major macronutrients, carbohydrate, fat, and protein. And you can have variation in the sources of all three of these in formula. And thus the permutations about the possibilities of having every combination of both fat and carbohydrate and protein leave you with a huge number of possible combinations. And that's before you even get into the sexy ingredients like does it have lutein, does it have HMOs, I'm just talking about the bare bones nutrition. So for protein, you can have soy, you can have dairy. Within dairy, you could have more whey or less whey, um, <laughs> which already is enough to blow your head. But then within each of those combinations, you can have intact full-size proteins, partially hydrolyzed smaller proteins, fully hyd hydrolyzed tiny hypoallergenic proteins. Um, and again, you can have all of those sizes in any combination of original protein source. Then you have carbohydrate. You can have lactose. You could have corn sugar, or corn syrup solids, corn syrup, maltodextrin, brown rice syrup, glucose syrup, starch of various plants. <laughs> you can see how, um, and all of these things, are digested slightly differently and affect babies' metabolism slightly differently. And so some may, babies may do better on any different combination of both protein and or carbohydrate. We haven't even gotten to fat. Fat, some babies don't do very well with palm oil. Some parents very much prefer to avoid soy oil. Some very vulnerable babies do better with a higher concentration of coconut oil, which has a high amount of medium chain triglycerides. You can add medium chain triglycerides or MCTs directly to formula. And so you have all of those possible combinations of fat and different formula companies will pick different fats to make up the fat content of their formula. So. I go through all of that very quickly, not to scare and overwhelm you, but more as an encouragement. If you've tried a formula that really hasn't sat well with your baby, there is a formula out there that probably is going to sit better. Now it is a journey and it's nice to have some professional help along that journey to finding that perfect formula and figuring out what ingredient is causing the issue, um, but again, I wanna leave it on a happy note. And for healthcare providers who are taught that all formulas are the same, it is my mission in life to provide professional education so that you can understand the differences by looking at the list of ingredients and be able to make targeted recommendations based on individual babies' symptoms. So, this is something that you can refer a healthcare provider to to just have that five second overview of the different options Boys, gentle touch. I saw honey, it's all right. Um, of the different <laughs> options just within the macronutrient category. Then you get into your micronutrients, your vitamins and minerals, and you can have different concentrations of things. Specifically, iron is the big one that can vary. And you can have different chemical sources. Boys, be gentle with each other, thank you. Um, and then you can have all plus or minus the sexy extra ingredients that um, can be a source of irritation for babies and cannot, like 
lutein, DHA, ARA, and now we have a lot more in the market. Milk fat globule membrane, lactoferrin, and what am I missing? Oh, HMOs, prebiotics, probiotics, the list goes on. <laughs> oh, hello, mwah. Um, so I hope that is helpful in just convincing you that not all formulas are the same and you can find a formula that really will suit your individual special baby. I am going to close by reading a little something that I wrote um, that I a long time ago couple months ago. I don't know if you guys remember, I did a happy hour about a breastfeeding study that came out in the Journal of Pediatrics, um, which is a very renowned journal. And it got a lot of press. It got on like, CNN and a lot of news stations because they found that basically breastfed babies weren't performing any better cognitively than formula fed babies at around five years of age, which is contrary to what a lot of people um, have found previously and have talked about in the lactation world. So it was a little controversial. And I wrote a letter to the editor um, entitled, Formula Feeding Exposure is Not Homogenous. So I am on this mission <laughs> to increase professional education about formula, but also increase the rigor um, at, at which academia studies formula-fed infants and the amount of attention we provide formula-fed infants, given that all formula is not the same. And it got published! Um, it's been a life goal of mine to get published in pediatrics because it is such a renowned journal. So I'm feeling very proud of myself. And when I take the time to write something, it sounds much more eloquent than when I spitball it while drinking wine. So I'm going to read it and make myself sound much more put together than I actually am. It's very short. Letter to editors have to be. So ignore the children and listen for just a second. So formula feeding exposure is not homogenous. All breastfeeding research faces the same age old challenge of innate selection bias. I do breastfeeding research and it's a huge challenge. Gerard et al, who's the author of this breastfeeding article, recently used advanced quasi-experimental techniques to mimic randomization. That was pretty cool. Um, in combination with a large contemporary cohort making a novel contribution to the field. This study was really cool. This study has received sig significant press attention, mainly because the findings contradict previous researchers who reported positive relationships between breastfeeding and offspring cognitive development and or performance. However, there is a crucial lack of discussion about a potentially critical co contributing factor to these conflicting results. Here comes Vaughn. Crash, yeah. Uh, the exposure, which is formula fed group, is not homogenous, meaning they're not all the same. Sweetheart, Vaughn Mommy is trying to sound important. Infant formula feeding options are incredibly vast and differ between cultures. Combining all formula fed infants into a single exposure diminishes researchers' ability to make clean comparisons. Furthermore, formula options and formulations are constantly changing, making it difficult to draw conclusive insights from compiled historical breastfeeding research that spans decades. The conductors of the famous promotion of breastfeeding intervention trial, the PROBIT trial if you've heard about it, used cluster randomization to study the impact of breastfeeding support interventions in Belarus between 1996 and 1997. At six and a half years, the intervention group exhibited significantly higher Weschler abbreviated scales of intelligence, it's kind of like an IQ, um, ranging between 2.9 to 7.5 points. In this current article, Gerard et al. studied infants born between 2007 and 2008 in Ireland. The difference in exposure between breastfed versus formula-fed infants in the Gerard study is likely vastly different from that of infants born over a decade previously in Belarus. A similar principle can be applied to the well-publicized 2015 study that revealed that breastfeeding is associated with a higher adult IQ, education, and income from a 1982 Brazilian birth cohort. Although these older studies remain impactful, it is noteworthy and often ignored that infant formula options have since evolved and advanced, making comparisons to contemporary studies such as the Girard study very difficult. We can further observe results from a recent, well-conducted meta-analysis of 18 cohort studies that revealed significantly higher performance on adult intelligence tests among breastfed offspring, averaging two and a half IQ points. This meta-analysis included birth cohorts that spanned almost four decades, 
ranging babies that range being born between 1968 and 2006. The authors provided no discussion of the inevitable heterogeneity in the formula-fed groups, like all these babies are fed different things, both within cohorts and across decades. Neither did they attempt to control for either of these factors. Although breast milk is undeniably the ideal feeding choice, advances in infant formula nutrition continue to shrink the gap in many infant outcomes aside, including IQ and cognitive development. Continuing with our example of cognitive development, infants randomly assigned to receive an experimental formula supplied, supplemented with bovine milk fat globule membrane, um, this is gonna be a formula very similar to Enthymol Inspire, um, between zero and six months exhibited six points higher daily scale scores at 12 months, similar to the breastfed control babies. The difference in Bailey scores is noteworthy because it's similar in nature to the difference in IQ points between breastfed versus formula-fed infants quoted from the historical studies above. Hi, Christine. Moving forward, researchers in the field need to acknowledge that formula feeding is not a homogenous exposure. Researchers need to begin characterizing the differences in formula exposure and incorporating these differences into studies of infant outcomes. We also need to acknowledge that insights from historical comparisons are losing relevance as time passes, and infant formula continues to evolve at a faster pace than research is conducted. Vaughn has gotten stuck in the closet. <laughs> Vaughn, it's okay. Here. And he fell over. I'm going to end there. Thank you. You're all right, honey. Um, thank you for humoring me and letting me read that. Um, I'm very proud of the research that I do, and I know there's countless researchers working on infant formula right now. It is really hard to keep up with the rate at which the formula industry changes ingredients, but there's brilliant, really good people working on it. And hopefully that letter to the editor will just get other people who just work on breastfeeding to think about when we compare breastfed infants to formula-fed babies, remember that they're not all drinking the same thing. And certain babies are going to thrive better on one formula versus another. I'm not saying that one formula is optimal for all babies, but certain babies do better with certain ingredients. And so once we get pediatricians and researchers all on board with that message, I think we'll have a lot less <laughs> a lot less cranky little ones out there. If I can provide any help with your cranky little one, if you guys are having any <laughs> nutrition issues in your house with your baby, I would love to help. You can set up a time to talk with me for a free consultation right here on Facebook or over on my website, and I would love to provide any help that I can. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll let Vaughn say goodbye. Would you like to say hello? Bye-bye. That's very nice. <laughs> You guys all have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye. Bye-bye.